How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Mother Spongebob Thousand and in this video we're going to talk about two disturbances that have the possibility of impacting the Caribbean. So first let's take a look at Tropical Storm Sean and right now it's wind speed is right around 40 miles per hour and if we were to continue to move forward with the GFS model model's forecast we do see that the GFS model does expect Tropical Storm Sean to weaken. However it still moves eastward um, bringing rainfall to the Leeward Islands as well as Puerto Rico but isn't much rainfall over the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Maybe at worst you should expect maybe around an inch of rain if this were to take this trajectory which is still far from certain because if we were to take a look at what the European model is stating with Tropical Storm Sean, Tropical, um, the European model doesn't even expect Tropical Storm Sean to live um, that long to even reach the Caribbean. So let's take a look at the 12Z run. You're going to see that with the European model, the European model just expects Tropical Storm Sean to dissipate um, after a while. Um, wait, let me go a little bit further back. Okay, this is Tropical Storm Sean. And we do see with the European model, it fizzles out Tropical Storm Sean. And we do have this trough that moves south enough to steer it out to sea. So this wouldn't be of any concern for Puerto Rico, the Lesser Antilles, such as the US and um, British Virgin Islands as well as other areas of the Lesser Antilles it shouldn't be much of a worry um, in the European models case but we still need to keep tabs on this um, there's still a pretty high amount of uncertainty between the European and the GFS model with the GFS model at least taking some type of entity towards the Caribbean while the European model wants to steer Sean out the sea and dissipates it before it could ever come close to the Caribbean so we're gonna need to pay close attention to um, these two scenarios a big thing we're going to keep in, in mind is the amount of dry air the european model expects a lot more dry air as well as this chop dig down which allows tropical storm sean to move um, further northward and not come close to the caribbean but we do see the dry air is just too much in the european model scenario the gfs model doesn't expect the same where the gfs model while it does definitely weaken it to below tropical depression status it's merely just a tropical wave at this point there's still a decent amount of moisture to bring um some rainfall right over puerto rico dominican republic haiti as well as the lesser antilles right around the thursday um, to Friday time frame right um, between October 19th and October um, 20th so we're gonna need to pay close attention to the amount of dry air I wouldn't say we'll have a definitive answer until maybe the Saturday time frame once we really get to see how much dry air there will be and how far south this trough will dig so I'll definitely keep you guys updated but take a look at our second disturbance which could become a little bit more of a concern in the more long-term future because I do believe its ceiling is a lot higher when it comes to developing into a tropical storm now um, let me show you guys the European models on um, precipitation forecast moving forward um, with that um, again let me go to the 12z run to show you guys more long-term outlook so this is a 12z run of the European model and with this chunk wave what's interesting is that the European model does bring a I wouldn't say an extremely strong tropical storm, but certainly does bring a tropical storm or at least um, a low pressure system that's near tropical storm status right in between the Lesser Antilles and the um, Windward Islands, which is definitely something to potentially be concerned about um, once we approach um, the weekend after this one, which would be Saturday, October 21st. Um, first and in a scenario like this you could easily experience three to five inches of rain in the higher elevations of the windward and leeward islands and up uh, and potentially gusty winds around 40 miles per hour to 50 if this were to take this scenario but this is still highly uncertain look at the forecast hour i'm going at there's still a lot of time to forecast um for the forecast to really um, become more accurate to become more certain and for the computer models to show a little bit more agreement regarding the track and the strength i'll keep you guys updated once we do get a little bit of higher certainty but what will be the key is the amount of ridging just to the north of it because of course for this storm to move east enough to impact the leeward and windward islands it will need the ridging to be a little bit stronger hopefully we do see a weakness in ridging like what the gfs model is suggesting where it wants to take this storm out to sea not bringing any impacts to the caribbean islands however that's um it's still a little bit too far out to say um, if that'll occur. So in the GFS model scenario, the GFS model also expects a tropical storm to develop, but expects 
Just enough of weakness in ridging to avoid the Caribbean Islands. Taking a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly. Let me show you guys that right now. We do see that the ridging becomes a lot weaker, mainly due to this um, trough that digs down towards eastern Canada and converges um, converges with this upper level low that would be located in the northeast to create just enough of a jet stream dip and ju and just enough and create just enough of weakness in ridging for this the move northward avoiding the Caribbean but the GF the European model of course shows a different scenario the ridging is a lot stronger so we see this storm move a lot um pretty much right over the leeward and windward islands by the time we approach October 21st time frame on Saturday so Definitely going to keep tabs on how the chuffing will build over the northeast. And I wouldn't say we'll get an accurate forecast until next week, right around the um, um, right around Monday of next week. That's when I'll say we'll definitely get a better idea of how the chuffing will be and if this will impact the um, Caribbean or not. So I'll certainly keep you guys updated. But if this were to move right over the Caribbean, you should expect anywhere from three to five inches of rain. Flash flooding, of course, would be a possibility. Um, taking a look at the um, for the forecast of um, radar map from the European model, we see this pretty large blob of thunder shower activity right over some of the leeward islands, which would certainly cause flash flooding as well as mudslides, especially in the higher elevations of some of these islands. And wind gusts, like I said, could be around 40 miles per hour. And when it comes to the strength of this, that's still also um, that's still also um, in the uncertain side. We're definitely going Gonna need to pay close attention to how the dry air will be because that's going to be one of the more inhibiting factors and another thing too is that the wind shear won't be in this storm's favor of course we're in the month of october so the wind shear tends to be a lot stronger overall throughout the atlantic and the thing that and this storm is expected to deal with a little bit of wind shear as it continues ahead further eastward it isn't necessarily enough to completely weaken it in the european models case but it's definitely enough to keep this storm from let's say gradually intensifying to maybe into a hurricane um taking a look at the upper level wind ma um forecast um from the european model and we do see there's going to be an upper level low just the west of this storm system that's going to bring strong upper level winds um pretty much surrounding the center of circulation the center of circulation will be shielded enough um, under an upper level high for the upper level winds not have as major of an effect on storm strength but will be enough certainly to um to pretty much disrupt the storm's um intensity because it'll push a lot of the moisture that's located in the upper levels away from the center circulation if we were to take a look at the soundings between the different levels of the atmosphere we do see that the winds along the surface um, are slightly stronger than the winds we see in the upper levels which means that the moisture located in the upper levels will be a little bit behind um in terms of position um from where the, the center of circulation is located because the center of circulation would be moving a little bit faster with the stronger surface level winds than um, the moisture that's in the upper levels which means that the storm um, will rather be um, asymmetrical and that will create a less efficient heat engine and a lot less e um, efficient of lift around the storm for this to intensify much so we're gonna need to keep in mind how much wind shear there is certainly but i but i will say that most likely it'll remain tropical storm status i, I wouldn't expect a hurricane um just yet um and based on historical standards what we see in october over the main development region it's very rare for a tropical cyclone to ever develop over this area so this makes me believe that it's going to be difficult for this to strengthen into a hurricane but the hurricane season is unpredictable so is the weather in general so we definitely can't rule out any possibility but i'll still lean a little bit more to this mainly being relegated at tropical storm status 
Now, in terms of the rainfall, you should expect over the Caribbean islands over the next seven days. The good news is that it should be rather dry. We see that over the Dominican Republic, over the next week, you should expect less, mostly less than an inch of rain outside of maybe the higher elevations closer to the Bico Duarte area of Dominican Republic and Halbacoa. And going a little bit further westward, we do see that Haiti should expect maybe around an inch. So as Jamaica, much of Cuba should expect maybe around an inch over next seven days and this extends to much of the leeward and windward islands just expect around an inch of rain over the next seven days a lot of this should be due to a blow up uh, uh, mainly just regular um thunder shower activity you see when it's very humid and warm out um just your typical thunder shower you could see on any um within any given day so it's not that much to worry about over the next seven days however keep in mind um for the week after because we certainly could see tropical storm um our next tropical storm move over the leeward and windward islands if the european model is correct and of course in other areas central america expect heavy rainfall it's very typical to see this during the month of october so watch out for flash flooding in a lot of these areas um this includes um nicaragua costa rica panama i'm um, extending into honduras as well and belize and guatemala and southern mexico expect very heavy rainfall over the next week and this extends this to the southeast portion of the united states as well now here is a forecasted track of tropical storm sean from the national hurricane center we do see that the national hurricane center does expect this to maintain tropical storm status until maybe a saturday time frame where it weakens into a depression and then beyond this point I'll say that you wouldn't experience impacts until maybe October 19th if this were to take a track for a westward right over the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico. Um, but it's still uncertain at this point. So I'll keep you guys updated if this does happen. And even if it does, don't expect much rain because the dry air will likely just fizzle it out for the most part. But don't at all rule out the possibility of this having heavier rainfall as well because it is still... Um, pretty uh, pretty long term forecasts if this were to re um, reach the Caribbean islands. In terms of the possibility that we're going to see a tropical storm develop in the main development region, so over the next seven days, you should expect a low 30% chance, but I do expect this chance to rise because both of the main computer models agree that there's going to be a tropical storm developing in the more long-term future beyond the seven-day time frame that's closer to the Caribbean. So you definitely need to pay very close attention all throughout the Windward and Leeward Islands by the time we approach next week, especially towards the end of next week. So definitely keep that in mind throughout Puerto Rico and even areas for west where like Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, the Cayman Islands potentially. Who knows? This could easily move very very far to the west. Here are what the GFS Ensemble members are stating at this time and why it's a little bit concerning is because we do have a couple of ensemble member runs definitely wanting to take a tropical storm towards the leeward and windward islands and right over Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. And these ensemble members are a combination from tropical storm Sean and our next tropical wave that's just south of the Cape Verde Islands. So there's easily that possibility that at least one of these disturbances could move over as a tropical storm based on what the ensemble members are forecasting. So definitely don't rule out that possibility. The European model is also showing very, a uh, very similar scenario when it comes to the ensemble members. We do have some ensemble members wanting to take closer to a tropical storm towards the Leeward Islands, while we have other ensemble members wanting to take this next tropical wave closer to the Windward Islands. So definitely pay close attention to the, that possibility. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like if you do enjoy this video, and I hope you guys have a great day.